Hey everybody, welcome to Road to Recovery. Kenny P here. I'm with a few of the guys from our little home group called Bloodline. You know, it's uh, guys, uh, my sponsors, some of my sponsees, some of their sponsees. It's our bloodline of, of recovery here. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the group and, and uh, what we think of it or what we're getting out of it. Right now we're going through the book, Drop the Rock. And I just wanted to ask John, uh, John's been here for a long time, and Leroy, and and, and I can't remember when we started uh, Bloodline exactly, so maybe one of you two guys could, could chime in and remind that's funny. me. That's one of the first things I was thinking about when we talked about this, was that first, that first time I walked into a meeting, there was a bunch of men, and they were all sitting about no formal, like, uh, it was like a round table, they were just sitting around your round table. And the format was simple, like nobody gets to fucking leave until everybody has shared. And there's no topic other than what's going on with you? What's going on with you today? Kind of thing, you know? So I remember feeling immediately fucking trapped and wanting to run, because it was my first time in there. I don't want to fucking close in there and have to talk about what was going on with me. Right? Uh, uh, as the men went around the room to talk about what's going on with them, you know, I got more courageous and again understand a little better. You know, they were modeling for me what I couldn't, you know, what I couldn't really conceive of by myself, which is how to how to speak freely and honestly amongst a group of men. You know, um, and so and I realized there was more fucking guys in there than there were like minutes in an hour. So I was like, we're gonna be here for fucking ever. Speak like. Yeah, I think that whenever you came on, we were at Lyle's house, weren't we? Or? Yeah, we were at Lyle's house, right? Yeah. So, so it was a great experience. I was, you know, I mean, it was a great experience. I mean, you know, I wasn't locked in for real life, but it felt you were committed in that group, in that moment, to sit down and talk about what was going on with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and what, I, what, I, what happened to me that day was like, I didn't really feel like there was going to be anything I was going to be able to talk about. Right. Yeah. But by the time it got around to me, there was a couple of things on my mind that I was able to talk about and share. Um, so, uh, to me, it was uh, novel at the time. I, I never seen anything like it. Right. I think back then we were barbecuing every week, too. We were kind of rotating between houses. And right. I really liked going out to Leroy's house because he always had the best meat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the hunter of the group, so he always had uh, the good meat. What do you think, Leroy? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like sitting here. It's just dark. If I can't hunt it, I don't need it. Um, it was, it was about seven years ago when um, I met you at one of the book studies, and that was after. For me, that was after I'd gone ten years without going to meetings, and then the mental obsession. For ease and comfort to come back, the, that that obsession that it talks about in the big book, and then I came back, and then you invited me here to this group, and and it was after we'd done some meetings at Lyle House, Lyle's, but the first place that we that I came was here in this room, mm. and then it was an environment for me. It was a it was a smaller group. And it was an environment that I was comfortable in. Um, I don't like crowds. I've never liked crowds. And so when I'm in a big meeting, I'm not talking. And if I do talk, it's going to be extremely superficial. It's just going to right. be something that the book says, and that's it. You know. And then I remember you also saying one of the first things that I heard you say that like stuck with me was in the context of sober, not stupid. Mm -hmm. And so it took me a little bit of time to find an environment to where, like John was saying, I'm sitting in a group, sitting around a group of men, but now I'm in a position to where, like, I can share what's on the inside and be confident about it, you know. And and that's and that's part of like the the, the principles that I've learned in the program is is keeping my side of the street clean. Well, if I got some shit going on that I need to talk about, and I want to be around some closed mouth friends, I have that environment. And in the environment of the meetings of the Bloodlines group, 
has always been, uh, for me, it's always been of an educational variety. And then, so we started out initially, like John was saying, when I came in, it was just you go around the group, and where are you at today, and what's going on, and how's, you know, and what I could share things about, like what was going on in my personal life, and my, with my relationships, or with, at that time, I was right in the middle of a divorce. You know, I, like, two days before that, that before you invited me here, I'd actually filed for a divorce. And so, I was just in this massive turmoil in my life. And, and I had somewhere where I could sit down and talk about it and share about it in an environment that I was comfortable with. And then the meetings progressively have changed to, we started going through books and we started selecting through books. And so my education of AA as a whole has vastly expanded. And in that expansion, it's allowed me to take and put practical application of the principles of the program into my everyday life. That's, you know, the, the book tells us in many places that the problem stems in the mind, that alcohol is but a symptom. And that's gone and has been gone for a long time, but I'm still stuck with my fucking brain. And, and I've learned how to handle that. And then when I have shit that I, that I don't, know how to, don't know how to deal with, I now have somewhere to where I can come in that closed mouth trust environment to where I can share stuff. You know what I mean? And somebody in the room is going to be like, well, damn, I felt the same way, or I went through this, or I went through that, you know, and then I can work through it. You know, and, and without having to worry about, you know, the, the obsession for eating comfort. You know what I mean? I don't have to make myself known. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying, you know, especially in the beginning, whenever we started, you know, six, seven years ago, whenever it was, uh, it was very intimate. There was maybe six of us, and, and we did, we just shared on, on what was going on in our life that week, you know, what's going on uh, in our personal lives and how we're doing, you know, and uh, if we had any areas that we need to work on, you know, we would help each other out. And then we grew into the different uh, book studies into the group. We've been doing that for quite some time now, you know, going through the big book and 12 and 12. And like we're doing now, we're going to drop the rock. And we've done some other books as well. And, and uh, our group's grown a little bit. You know, we're, we've only got maybe 12 people on the maximum right now. However, you know, it still seems to be an intimate group because we can still share on that personal level with each other, you know, we're, we're so close to each other, that, you know, there's that, that trust of confidence with the group. And, and the uh, four of us are still here. Yeah, absolutely, four of the original <coughs> are still here. And, and it's not that all we have is 12 people in our, in our what you would call bloodline family. Each one of us has several, may have several sponsees or other sponsees, but just for one reason or another, this group itself you know, maybe it's just divinely guided to where there's only 12 of us here that's keeping it down to a very intimate group instead of being a larger group, you know. Uh, Greg is another one of our original members. Greg, you want to add anything here? I have, uh, I have a family here, you know. Right, uh, exactly. You know, uh, uh, I have at any point been with you, with Sammy, uh, with Bob, with uh, 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 Leroy, with, with John, uh, and I like, had daily email, text, uh, 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 encouragements uh, from friends here. I, I talk to people, and if I say something, they understand my history. This is my family. This is my family. I mean, I, I, I don't have sanity at home. I don't know who the hell you're married to, but I just don't have sanity at home. I got like, you know, I, 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 some friends came in from out of town. They said, "Oh, you're here without your wife." You know, yeah. Well, I, my sponsor said it was a good time to leave. So you know, I just walked out. And I was, I just heard something. I was like, "What the? What did you say?" And I just, yeah, perfect time to leave. That's right. I'm going. And and I was there like 20 minutes early. But but I got sanity here. I got a family here. This is my family. This is where I. This is where when the world is swirling around and everything is stupid, I can come here and you guys have both feet on the ground. And we talk about having both feet on the ground, how to get me centered again. When I, one of the first times I came, I, 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 was, I was talking about something, and you said to me, you need to make a gratitude list. And I went, damn, I already knew that. Why did I remember that? So I need someone to remind me of shit. 
that I forgot about, especially when I'm, I'm, you know, when you're in the fight, you don't always remember which moves to call. Right. You know, let's throw them this way, punch them in the face that way. You know, someone's got to say, hey, use your right hand. You know, I, I need I need some encouragement. You're my coaches, so that's who, I, that's who you guys are. Yeah, that's a good thing about this group, too, is, is we all, you know, we're the same, we're all equal, and we can all help each other out. You know, we can help each other to, to uh, do the things we can't see by ourselves. So. I really yeah. appreciate that with this group. Uh, Adam, is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I would echo the sentiments. Uh, you know, three and a half years of sobriety for me, four and a half years of attempting, and in that first year, I bounced around to every different meeting you could possibly look for. And it was in this meeting, small, intimate, like-minded men, all searching for the same thing and working towards that, that I found my home, you know? Uh, so this is far and away my favorite meeting, and um, the other piece is the reading. I mean, when I was getting sober, those early morning intimate sessions of reading in the back room there, going through different literature, discussing it intimately, that helped me greatly, and I get that same feeling here. So uh, this is, you know, this is the meeting I look forward to most every week. Absolutely. Yeah. Bob, is there anything you'd like to add here, please? Yeah, I like to, you know, I stumbled on this from a friend of mine invited me to it. And I wound up coming here and I liked it, you know. I like a little men's meeting. It's more intimate and there's no distractions with the females. Right. And I like a little men's group because I feel I can come here and say whatever is on my mind and it's not going to go outside the room. Where in a bigger meeting I might hold back on what I'm talking about because I don't want to reveal it outside mm -hmm. the rooms. Mm -hmm. So this for me is a safe place and uh, men get together and talk about their feelings with you know, real men have feelings, and uh, I never really talked about that in a group of men. You know? So for me, I'm just glad I stumbled onto this group, and, and it's a home for me. You know, it's uh, I look forward to every Wednesday. That's it for me. I like that, Bob, because because uh, you know, whenever we're in a in a uh, larger meeting, you know, we we uh, share in a general way right. what our lives used to be like, what happened, what we're like today, and this group. You know, especially since we're in a bloodline, you know, of sponsors and sponsees, you know, we already know each other's lives, you know, and we've all been through the steps, we've all done the work, we've got several years of experience in here, and, and we, we care about each other that much, and we can, we can get down to that gut level honesty of what's going on in our lives, you know, especially if someone's troubled, you know, we can spot it right away, so that they're not going to hide anything in this group. Is that anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, in, in this group specifically, uh, just a lot of the books that we go through, uh, you know, I have a lot of trouble going through them, uh, understanding them, and then just getting the different perspectives back from uh, each and every one of you here. That, that helps me out tremendously because I don't always see things clearly or I don't see things the right way. And then uh, just getting that, uh, that, that understanding, a different understanding really helps me out, that different perspective. And uh, I do like this this intimate meeting that we have here. You know, uh, we get to share. Pretty much, you can't hide in this room. So no. that's what I love. That's what I love about. That's what I love about this. You can't you can't hide in here. Uh, the bigger meetings you can't hide in. And uh, I do. I love I love the, the family. And uh, you know, we do connect with one another on a, on a whole different level. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. I love it. Thank Thanks, Sam. Yeah, you know, I'm hearing that from, from uh, everybody. You know, it's just, you know, we look at each other like family. You know, we, we've gotten away from the friendship, even though we are friends. We have this family uh, uh, feeling here as well. Don, you're fairly new to the to the group. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I feel very fortunate to have, have been invited here. Uh, it's only been a couple of months. Uh, I'm still having a hard time getting my shit together and, and you know, letting you people know what I'm really all about. But, I just, uh, it's taken me a long time to get that comfortable, I guess. I just haven't been all my life. You know? You'll hear from me someday, you know, but uh, I wanna, I wanna, I, I do have a lot of things in my head, but again, it's just so hard to come out and try and share, and, you know, it just turns into a jumble, and, you know, I don't know. I think more one-on-one -on -one for me, it worked a lot better. You know, I, uh, I get a little more alone time for people to understand. There's, there's, there's things, I'll tell you, that this learning here is, is uh, I've learned more in this couple of months 
about uh, these two steps, or this step that we were only been on one, uh, that I ever thought was in the book, or any book, or any knowledge, or, you know, it just, it explains it, and you guys explain things so well, that by the time you're done, I don't even want to say anything. You know, I, I try and absorb and absorb, and, and that's the way I am, you know. I'm a little, I hate to say I'm a private person, but I am. Absolutely. But I, but I really love you guys, and I love being here. You know, I, I, can't, I can't thank Mark enough for inviting me. Uh, really, it, it's a highlight of the week. You know, it, it really it is. Yeah, I think I speak for everyone whenever I say that that uh, that uh, you bring a lot to the group. You know, even even in the weeks that you were quiet, whenever you first came here, you know, and you still brought that element to the group that we needed. You know, and, and I believe that you need each person in a group. And and I was amazed and shocked, and I think everybody probably was. And Bob, I think it was Bob that was disappointed that he wasn't here the first night that you were there. <laughs> and. and uh, uh, you know, whenever you, whenever you uh, were willing to speak up and share, you know, you had something really good to share. You know, and we really appreciated that. And each time that you shared, you brought something good to the table. And, and I know you've got a lot of experience and, and knowledge in there and, and wisdom. And, and we appreciate and enjoy every time you share it at the meeting. So mm -hmm. we're, we're just happy you're here. Then we've got uh, uh, American Matt, and we call him American Matt because we had two Matts in our morning meeting. One was English Matt, and one was American Matt, and and it's it's unfortunate, but it, but uh, English Matt just could not or would not see our way of living. You know, and he, he he's a real alcoholic just like us, but he was unwilling to to uh, go to any lengths. You know, and and uh, he passed away from this disease. We miss him, but, but we're left with American Matt, and American Matt was able to witness that, so hopefully that's going to help him a little bit more. Matt? Yeah, I'm grateful to be here. I, I arrived through through Bob, my sponsor, and um, this is, like two of the other guys are saying, it's also my, my favorite meeting of the week. I have a home group that's much bigger, and, um, and I enjoy that setup too, but this, I find, is an environment where, where I learn more. It's more of a a study and also um, just the, the format of us, the way that we share um, is a longer form thing and I, I think, you know, sharing for a couple of minutes more truth comes out or things come out that I wasn't really expecting to say or wasn't even on my mind, but I think just the group collective here helps to draw out concerns and, and confusion and, and clear things up. So I'm grateful for this group. I, I love it. Thanks, man. We're real happy you're here. You know, like everybody else, I think each person is bringing something to the table. You know, and we're glad you're here. So, in the in the context, like in the in the book, it says people that would normally not associate. Right. People, you know, people get together. Not mix, yes. And so, just in this group right here, I mean, the vast difference between you know, I grew up in a bunkhouse on a horse ranch. You know, and so. A lot of like with Adam and that, the way that Adam grew up and stuff like that, he's somebody I would have probably never met, you know, just because of her lifestyle. Like, um, like it was said, I'm more comfortable with a backpack and a rifle in the mountains than I am in a, t in a city. <laughs> you know? and, and so to have this setting, you know what I mean? To have this setting is to me is so valuable. They're like and that's why I call this one my home group. You know what I mean? This is a meeting I'm not gonna miss unless I'm out hunting. But right. <laughs> yeah, you're one hundred percent right. You know, as I looked around the table here, you know, we we each come from different walks of life, you know, and and uh, we've had our own experiences, you know, that deep down we're joined because we're all alcoholics, you know. And and uh, not only that we're alcoholics, but the more important thing is we've all found a solution to that problem, you know. And uh, that's what joins us together in brotherly and harmonious uh, care, you know. And, and uh, just there's a bond that just can't seem to be broken, you know. We would not that we would even imagine trying to break it. I mean, we've all spoken of that desire to be here, you know, and how it's the, the highlight of our week, you know. And we look forward to coming here, you know. So so this. Uh, alcoholics and honest is full of people who normally would not mix. I think between the four core of us that have been here for that seven years or so, I think there's a hundred years of sprite just between the four of us. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let's see, Steve. I'm Steve. I'm an alcoholic. Hey, Steve. I, and this is the highlight of my week, too. It really is, since I've been coming. And uh, 
I, uh, I look forward to my Wednesday night coming an hour early with John and then hanging out with this. It pushes me to the, to, to the end of my night because when I get up for work, I, I'm wore out. And, uh, but I didn't think there was so much to step six either. I love this book, Drop the Rock. You gave it to me. I don't know, it's been a couple of years if I remember right, probably two. And I went through it in, 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 in such a rush but now I've got all these other perspectives of what it means to everybody. It makes a little bit more sense to me. And uh, I've really grown kind of fond of this meeting. I, I, I really look forward to it and, and it is important to me. You know, I, I've got two nights that are, that are highlighted for me and Wednesday night's one and Friday night's the other. And, I like the men's thing too. I used to like the mixed meetings and I didn't care what I shared, you know. I, I shared everything out there and I come in here and I share everything, but I guess like you say too, you know, in a general way. And uh, you know, like last week was on lust, you know. I sat in here with my mouth shut a lot, you know, and I didn't say a whole lot about any of it. And because that's... That's what my four step was all about, my lustful <laughs> behavior, you know, and, and some of the stuff I, you know, I didn't mind sharing and, you know, the ego wants to run crazy with it and the rest of it is shame and humiliation. You know, I, I did a lot of things that I'm ashamed of and humiliated about it. But I love this group. I, I remember coming to it, I don't know, three or four years ago and then I kind of faded away from it. And uh, I'm glad I'm back at it, and I'm going to continue in it. And I, I love, I love having this. This, this, this is a highlight for me. You know, and I, I, I believe you're right here. You know, what I got out of what you were just saying is, is uh, what comes to me is in chapter two. There's a solution. You know, uh, about halfway through the chapter, uh, it says there is a solution. Almost none of us like the self-searching level of our pride and confession of shortcomings, which the process requires for its successful transformation. And I believe that's what we have here in this small group. This is a, a, a place where we need to share those intimate things. We're sharing without the ego. You know, there's a big deflation of ego here. You know, that level of pride, that humbleness of, of what we do in here. You know, and, and that's what I really love and appreciate. And I think we all can agree on that. And you shared it a little earlier about we call each other on our stuff and we recognize when something's not right with the other because it was just last Saturday, if I remember right, it was Saturday and you called me yeah. and you asked me why I didn't share and what was going on and how I am doing it. And I, and I explained it to you and a lot of that stuff I'll share with you intimately. I don't want to share it with the group. Right. Yeah, I knew, I knew why you didn't share, you know, I mean... Me and you work together on these steps, and, and I know your life as well as you know my life. We know all the intimate details, and we've shared those one-on-one, -on -one, and I understood why you didn't want to share in the group, you know, and there is some things that we're not going to share in a group, you know. Uh, for the most part, I, I think probably everything that has ever happened to me or I've done in my life, I've shared with the group, and, and all you guys have shared with me, whether it was at the group level or or one-on-one -on -one level, you know, but, yeah. but uh, I do believe that this is a group where we can really get down to, to what's going on in our life. So, Sober, not stupid. Sober, not stupid. <laughs> okay, we got uh, time for one more. We just happen to have one more here, and this is, uh, I, do, I just want to nickname him Donut Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Mark brings the donuts every week. And, and, it shows. Uh, it shows. You know, <laughs> the reason nobody else is talking very much is they're all, uh, they all got a donut in their mouth and no words like me. <laughs> I miss those donuts. I miss them. That's the only time I buy them is here. No, this is a fantastic meeting. I've been in Vegas for about five years now and searching for a meeting like this and the material that, that we cover here is, uh, uh, you know, I, I've been privileged to sit here and hear all these different perspectives as, as for this uh, uh, material that we're going over and uh, stuff that I never would have thought of that, that, that is the truth. Um, and there's nothing like a men's meeting. I, I mean, I, I don't care if you're in a meeting with 100 people, 99 of them are men, and one's a 
90 year old woman, it changes the meaning a little bit. Um, it just does. Some of us are sick of the Well, I think you've spoken up. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it, it's, just, it's just a privilege to be, uh, be with you not here. I uh, can't say enough good things about this meeting. That's all I got. Yeah, thanks, Mark. You know, and, and I don't, I don't think there's a, a place where I've enjoyed more laughter and and I've shed more tears than this group right here. You know, and, and this place where I can uh, feel just as good, whether it's, it's shedding those tears, because those are the tears of, of uh, uh, gratitude and and happiness and the way our lives have changed, and, and then. And then there's that laughter, you know, the the, uh, the miracle for the for the human being. So I think everybody got to share, right? I just want to thank everybody for coming out on the road to recovery. Uh, this is a new uh, YouTube channel. I'm trying to get it going. You know, I've got good motives of, of carrying the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous and teaching the Big Book the way I've been teaching it. Uh, you know, in group study levels. And I just want to add some more things to this. And I think this is a great thing right here. And uh, this is actually going to be my last Wednesday that I'm with you guys for quite some time because I'm getting ready to go out on the road. Next Wednesday night I have a hospital procedure, so I won't be here next Wednesday night. Uh, however, uh, I'm trying to get out of town like four days after that, so this will be my last Wednesday, God willing, <laughs> for some time you know, going on the road. But, but, you know, what I'd like to do, though, is is uh, while I am on the road, I don't know how often, but I'd like to somehow, uh, you know, maybe uh, call up and, and get us all together with something like this again, or at least get FaceTime. you know fa FaceTime with everybody and, and just see how everybody's doing. Because I love all you guys who meant so much to uh, to my recovery. So thanks again for for coming out, guys. Thanks, Kenny.